Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have my book review of the fantasy novel The Library of the Sapphire Wind by Jane Linscold. It's the first book in her Overwear book series published by Bain Books. I actually heard about Miss Linscold uh, when I was reading the book, the What Price Victory uh, uh, short story novella collection uh, that David Weber edited as part of his um, big uh, Honorverse, you know, collection. It's part of the uh, the Worlds of Honor, and uh, I read I had to read this book because I had to do an interview, which was just delightful with all of these authors. And one of the authors who contributed to this book was Jane Linscold. And so I was doing research, trying to find out about Miss Linscold and about her work with Bain, her work with David Weber and all this stuff. And I heard about this new book series recent, um, uh, published last year, called, and the first book was Library of the Sapphire Wind. And so after we did the interview, which was just delightful, Miss Linscold was very kind and very gracious to do the interview, I went out and I bought this book, her first book in the series, and thought, you know what, I'll give it a try, I'll see how I like it. And so I just finished reading the book, and it is just a fun, delightful tale. It is so much fun. If you like books like Narnia, and if you like adventure storytelling, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the right adventure. Maybe Indiana Jones isn't the right type. But if you like adventure storytelling, and then also like magical worlds like Narnia, I think that you're going to really enjoy this book. Um, uh this book is that kind of fantasy storytelling that has anthropomorphic uh, humans that have like the the bodies of humans but the the heads of animals, kind of like in the Robin Hood um, uh, Disney movie, uh, and and it's also got some similarities to things like Red Wall and and, and Narnia and stuff. But uh, this is really targeted at adults. Um, uh, there's not too much language in the book, although there were a few times where like the book would go hundreds of pages with you know, no language whatsoever. And then all of a sudden a character would just say a slew of profanities. And I'd be like, where did that come from? Like you went a hundred pages and you just did anyway. Um, but it's a, it's a very appropriate book and it's, you know, I think a lot of ages will appreciate it, but it's certainly geared towards adults. I saw some reviews online that said it was, should be considered YA. I do not believe it should be YA. I think it's correctly shelved in the adults, uh, space and here's why. Most fantasy books like this, the main protagonist is teenager or teenagers or, or preteens who get thrown into this magical universe and have to deal with these magical creatures, magical characters, and whatnot. Think about things like Harry Potter or uh, Lord of the Rings even, or even um, uh, uh, the best example, as I said, is Narnia. I'm going to come back to Narnia a lot because there's a lot of, a lot of things to point out between this and Narnia. But, uh, you know, it's usually teenagers who, who get thrust into this these situations. Well, in this book, it's a bunch of older women. Uh, there's, there's three women who actually, because of some circumstances, have very similar names. You have uh, Teg, who is a 50-something-year-old um, uh, uh, archaeology professor. And then you have Meg, who is a uh, 60- or 70-something age uh, grandma uh, who's widowed. And then you have um, uh, Peg, who is like a 60, 70 something age grandma with that's more hippie like and is more um, uh, wild and she's uh, uh, divorced. And so you have these three women who are part of a book club uh, and they're alone and all of a sudden they get sucked into this magical world. And these kids intended, uh, this, the, the, these kids in this magical world, which include a uh, girl, Varys, who is basically has the head of a fox. You have the boy Grunwald, who has the head of a deer. And then you have Axrax, uh, Akrak. I'm trying to pr uh, pr pronounce his name, uh, uh, Zirak, that's how you say it, Zirak. He has the head of a lion. And the three of them are trying to summon, like, basically wise wizards or wise ones who can help them with their problems because each of these three kids, who are probably, you know, like, they're, they're, they're 19, 20, that age, um, young adults, 
they are trying to get information because they each have like a quest that they're trying to save. One of them is trying to find a long lost family member. One of them has lost their teacher and and another one uh, has a family member who's sick. And so they're each trying to help them and get this information that they need. And they inadvertently call these three old women who, well, one of them's not old, but you know what I mean when I say older women, these these three older women who just... (laughs) who just have no idea what's in this world. They have no idea there is a fantasy world. So they're like, what? Talking animals? They're like, we're not animals, we're people. It's, it's delightful. It's so much fun. Um, uh, there's, the opening kind of has that feeling too in Narnia where they go up to the beaver and the beaver says, I ain't gonna smell it if that's what you want. It, it's, it's just delightfully fun dynamics. And these three women, these older women, decide they're gonna stay around in this world even though they have the ability to go home whenever they want. They decide to stay in this world and help these kids on their quest. These kids are, by the way, known as inquisitors because they're inquisitive. They're looking for answers. Um, uh, and so they end up going on this flying magical ship like you see in the cover. And they go to try to find the library of the Sapphire Wind, which is the library that has been destroyed in years past, but still holds the answers that all these kids need. Um, uh, but as with many a good story, There are things that are surprises and twists and unrevealed information that causes our travelers to stumble and perhaps not complete their quest. And as I mentioned, it's a delightful book. It's so much fun. It's so, it it has that classic fantasy feeling mixed with kind of a a uniqueness. You know, the best, the best fantasy does something where it feels familiar because of the tropes it's using, but also feels like it's doing something different. It adds something new to the table. You have to blend, blend the two of them. If you're just redoing old traditional fantasy, it's harder for new readers to enjoy it because they're like, we've seen that done before. But if you're just twisting everything, if you're just trying to break out and do something new, it's hard to attract new readers because we do want an element of the familiar. So you have to balance the two. And this book perfectly balances it. The familiar is the tropes. Main characters are sent into this magical universe and have to go on adventures. The twist is these are older women. And it's, it's a really fast. And so like they're, uh, you know, they, they realize, Hey, wait a second. I have all these medications I'm taking. I can't just go on this quest. I have to go stock up on my medication. Whereas that's not usually things teenagers think about when they're going on a quest in, in, in fantasy books. So it's just, it, it's just a delightful, delightful read. Um, uh, everything about this book was just fun throughout. Um, uh, they get to the library much quicker than you would anticipate in the book. So that means that there's still lots of twists and turns left to happen. There is one negative I would have about the book, and that is that it ends super abruptly. It does not feel like it has a proper ending. Uh, I'm, I'm someone that I don't knock books for not tying everything up. You know, I'm, I read a ton of series. In fact, the majority of the books I read are not standalones. They're parts of a larger series. So if everything's not tied up, I understand. You have, you have plot lines that you're setting up for the future. You want to leave the audience wanting more. That all makes sense. But even in most books, there's an element of everything in this book was properly wrapped up, and then we're setting up the next book, setting up the next book, things like that. The difference is that this book starts to wrap everything up and then it's like the beginning of the next adventure for like 50 pages and then it abruptly ends and if it had ended about 50 pages earlier it would have felt like a natural ending all right we're moving on to the next story but instead because it's just so out of nowhere the ending if you didn't know you were nearing the ending you'd think you know oh you're only halfway through the book because you're just starting the next part of the adventure that adventure so it just felt like an odd odd ending to me it felt like an odd editing choice um uh but At least I'll say this, it has me really intrigued because I want to find out what happens to our characters. There were some great twists in this book, and I just really want to find out what happens. And I did purchase the second book in the series, which has already been published, Aurora Borealis Bridge. Um, uh, And these books form a triptych where you put them together, and it's basically one larger um, cover. I'm going to try to do that. I hope that that works out properly. But uh, it's, you know, it's one big painting that shows the ship and all the characters. And um, uh, there is a third book coming out this November. Now, 
I'm not entirely sure whether the third book is the third book in a trilogy that wraps everything up, or if this is a duology and the third book starts something new. I, the, the marketing has not been clear on that. So all I know is this for sure continues the storyline of this of the first book. And so I'm very excited to get to read this. Um, uh, and, you know, it's a good feeling when I want to go out while I'm reading the first book and go out and buy the second book because I'm that excited to find out what's going to happen. Uh, sometimes I do that because I feel the necessity. I need to get the book because I know I'm going to do it. This is a, oh, I'm excited to read this. So overall, I'm very positive about this book. It's delightful. It's so much fun to read. If you're, if you've been reading fantasy for a long time, you're going to get that blend of classic and new at the same time that you're going to love. If you are a Narnia fan, you will certainly love all the Narnia references in here because these characters are from our world that get sucked into another. And so they're well-read characters from a book club. So they make references. There's, there's one character where there's a lion that shows up and one of the characters references a lion in Narnia that's referencing Aslan that basically turns it from a just a reference to Narnia to basically a double entendre which is just hilarious it is so funny so I I I, I had a delightful time with this book so if you've read this book, what were your thoughts on it? If you've read books similar to this, let me know what other books kind of fit this type of description that I'm talking about. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.